of the game is important, but that may have been the most important field goal that Texas has hit thus far. Because if Houston gets him out six or seven points, uh, they could blow him out. They need to keep this game within one. Dickens has it blocked from behind by Broadway. Houston will maintain. They don't reset the 45-second clock. It's down to 22. You notice now that it's showtime, you're going to see Franklin, Dickens, and, Nick, and uh, Gettys handle that ball. There is Dickens. Again, a career-high 20 the other night at TCU. He's got three straight baskets here, nine points on the night, and Houston leads by three. I'm a little impressed with the uh, freshman out of uh, Queens, New York, uh, Alex Broadway. He's, uh, he's played a quiet game, but a good ball game thus far. Brown Lee, the leading scorer, number 55 for Texas, has 18 already tonight. He's going to have to hit that shot. Winslow tries to get the break going for Houston, and they've got the numbers. <laughs> Super tight. Franklin will score, and the Cougars start to pick up a little jet stream now as they're up by five again. Well, as long as they kept them quiet and the transition game wasn't a factor and Texas could come down in the half-court offense, Sam, they were in the ball game. they have fallen behind five. Bobby Weltlich, good timeout call. Now let's see if he can make the conducive adjustments that are necessary to get back in it. Well, as the Longhorns try to regroup, 11.54 left to play. Second half, Houston 48, Texas 43 in Southwest Conference. Basketball from Austin. Wednesday, tip off a super season doubleheader. ACC rivals North Carolina and Maryland collide in heavy traffic under the boards live. The Big Ten goes to the line next. Wisconsin's Badgers look to keep sharpshooting Curtis Wilson and Ohio State at bay in a key matchup. Then Miami's big man runs wild. Larry Zonka pulls a lot of freight in Super Bowl VII, where the Dolphins take the Redskins to task. It's all here Wednesday on ESPN. Aha, there's a thief in this attic. This skimpy amount of insulation can rob you bland on your fuel bill. Fight back with the attic blanket from Owens Corning. It's the thickest, most powerful roll of thermal protection you can have. It can help you save money on your fuel bills. It's an open and shut case. Owens Corning, our building products put your house in the paint. College basketball continues on ESPN, and it may not be all the Pearl Washington show when Syracuse plays host to Boston College. Boston College, a two-point loser in overtime to number one Georgetown, will go up against Syracuse Tuesday night at 8 p.m. If that's not enough, that's part of the first of the doubleheader, as Clemson will go against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech upset, but they'll be ready to rebound against Clemson, and that, too, will follow that exciting Boston College-Syracuse game again Tuesday here on ESPN. Well, Sam, the unbeaten list has dwindled to two with Georgetown, and uh, the Duke Blue Devils will extend it today, too, in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. Well, they finally prevailed 63-58 over Virginia. Again, Georgetown in overtime over Boston College, 82-80. Wow. Wacker inside is fouled. The basket will count. Wacker with eight points in the half, 14 for the game. Gettys will pick up the personal foul. That's his first. And Wacker will go to the line trying to complete a three-point play. The mere presence of Mike Wacker and the second effort that he exemplifies are unbelievable. Took the jumper from the corner, followed it, got into position, and has a chance to complete three and cut the lead to two. Wacker's foul shot is good. Texas, once again, down by a deuce, 48-46. to 46. I'll tell you, SMU squeaked by today, too, didn't it? 63-60 overtime over Arkansas. A couple of the highly rated teams out of the Southwest Conference. You see the shooting now in the second half of Houston picking up in Texas on the way down a bit. Well, I know this. The last time Steve uh, put the graphic up, Houston was shooting 16% for the half. They're up to 58, so they're improving. I think they're getting it down close, even though they're shooting outside. Oh. That's going to be Franklin's basket. 14 points by Alvin Franklin, 50-46 Houston. Now you know what we mean when we say an exceptional athlete. Alvin Franklin at 6-2 is in there tipping over John Brown Lee and Mike Wacker at 6'9 and 6'10. So that's a pretty good talent. You may remember Franklin got 21 or year ago and tried to keep the Cougars in the game, but it was not enough as the Hoyas won the title. If you look at the uh, matchup zone of the uh, Houston Cougars. Brown Lee misses. Gettys with a rebound. Look at Dickens turn on the afterburner and scores on a nice, nice off shot. Well, again, you hate to say it with 10 minutes to go and only a six-point lead, but the Cougars sense it. 
They know they've got him on the ropes because since they've dropped back in that matchup zone, their shot selection has not been real good. Consequently, they've jumped out to a six-point lead. That's his opportunity side, as you see, with Willock, number 14. Harriman, who had a good first half, as he got a total of six, but has scored only two. Make that eight in the first half, two here in the second. They're forcing it now, Sam. That's why they've got to hit that perimeter jump shot at the top of the key. But the Cougars have neutralized them a little bit in that matchup by putting Reed Geddes at 6'7 there with a good arm span to take away that quick jump. George Davis, number 11 from Fort Worth Pasco, will get ready to check in defensively for Texas here in a moment. Out of the corner, Franklin Geddes operates outside. Look at the hands of Anderson. Great pass. Beautiful offensive side hook, but it's followed up and in by Winslow. As he puts it down, he's got only eight tonight. But it's 54-46. Houston elongates the lead to eight again. If you don't shut a Ricky Winslow out long, you may slow him down for a while or lull him to sleep, but you know he's going to come alive sooner or later. Another steal in the 14th turnover by Texas. As Houston now threatens to take it back up to 10. They led 29-19 earlier in the first half for their biggest lead of 10 points. There's where a Kenny Smith from North Carolina and or the good point guard uh, comes in handy. Uh, Texas was close, and uh, all of a sudden now they're down eight because they've come down and made some uh, mistakes that an experienced ball club should not be making. Getty is at the point lead Houston again. 56-46, 10 point balls for Houston. And you know when you have two offensive uh, weapons like uh, Alvin Franklin and uh, Eric Dickens, uh, you kind of have a tendency not to guard Reed Geddes, Sam, but let me say this to you. Even though he only shoots 40% from the field, you have got to play him honest because he can't hit. Well, he does indeed as Houston leads it by 10, 46-40, 56 with 8-40. If you just counts on the world of economics, count on CNN. Weekdays, CNN brings you hourly Wall Street reports and late-breaking economic news. Weeknights, Moneyline looks at the day's economic news plus the experts. Sundays, Inside Business talks with the business newsmakers. Whatever your investment, CNN is the source for today's economic news. For your money, CNN is the news. Watch Cable News Network on Austin Cablevision Channel 11. Give your pet all the help you can if they get lost. License your pet at your veterinarian's. It's the law, you know. And be sure your pet wears the license tag for easy identification in the event they should stray. The Humane Society of Austin and Travis County hope they'd never see your pet at the shelter. But if they do, they need identification to return them to you. For license information, call the Humane Society, 478-9325. Sam Smith and John Clark back here at the University of Texas. A beautiful overhead shot of this special event center. The Houston Cougars now have run out to their second 10-point lead at 56-46. Guy Lewis, what a great winning tradition. You know, it's sometimes easy to get up there with that red and white uh, check tile, but it's uh, even more difficult to stay up there as a winning coach. Oh, Sam, as you mentioned, the accolades that uh, man has received over the years have been well-earned. But uh, as you say, it's not tough building the program. The difficulty becomes in maintaining it, and I think that's what separates the Guy Lewises, the Dean Smiths, the Bobby Knights, because they have that charisma to be able to maintain that program. Texas is still doing well, as you saw there in the second half on the backboard, but some turnovers have crept back into their game, as outside with the jump shot is Willa. Again, Sam, not to uh, harp on it too much, but that top of the key shot's the one that's going to get them back in it if they're going to get back. And it's been open most of the night. It's, it's an eight-point Houston lead, 8-14 to play. And there's a good look at that double low post that the Cougars run. They roam that baseline with their two shooters and then right to the inside. Texas back in their man for man, trying to force some action by Houston. Brownlee rebounding the ball off again. Brownlee only had a couple of rebounds at halftime, but I'm sure he's got four or five now here in the second half to help lead that. Attack by the Longhorns. Carlton Cooper trying to steal the ball away from Franklin again as he chases it down for Houston. No substitute for speed. Well, again, they could have cut it to six in the turnover. Cost them, and uh, the Cougars know what to do. Oh, well, thank you. Turn around. As Texas says, and Houston turns it back around. 7.39 to play. Eight-point lead by Houston. 
as they come back in. Again, number 11 is George Davis out of Fort Worth Pascal, a 5'11 sophomore, attack outside in place of Broadway. And Davis says thank you, but no thank you, says the rim as Wacker knocks it away from Franklin. Look at Brownlee. Oh, my. 20 points by John Brownlee. Excellent call, Sam. And you notice that Bobby Weltlake and the Longhorns are looking for the chemistry. They're looking for that one guard that can come in, run this basketball team, hit that jump shot at the top of the key when they need it. And uh, I'll tell you, they're fortunate only to be six down. Here's the turnaround by Anderson. It won't go. And there's a whistle and a foul. And Winslow will get his fourth personal foul over the back of Wacker. And I'll tell you, with 7.03 to go, that's a key foul. And uh, once again, it exemplifies the coaching ability of Bobby Weltlick uh, fundamentally because Mike Wacker had good inside position. Winslow had no choice but to go over the back and create the foul. Brownlee, we were checking our notes, and our producer, Edmund, brought us up to date that those 20 points by Brownlee matches his career and season high. He got 20 against LSU earlier this year. He's got 20 tonight, and he's brought Bob Watley's team back within six of Houston. The timeout of the floor at 7.03 to play in the second half. Amidst growing economic turbulence, many people feel that unemployment is our greatest national concern. But at the Texas Employment Commission, that has always been our greatest concern. We assist workers and employers with job placement, recruitment, testing, and unemployment needs. And we never charge a fee. If you're looking for a job or a worker, contact the Texas Employment Commission, your job service of Texas. We cover the world of business. We're the Financial News Network. From Wall Street to the West, FNN means business news, stock news, and commodities. We'll bring you interviews from leading experts in business and finance. And we feature both the New York and American Stock Exchange ticker tapes. FNN, for those wanting to know the who, what, when, where, and why, tune to FNN, Monday through Friday. enough to impress you he'll try one more time it'll be the 1985 rico japan bowl on saturday january the 12th as jim simpson and paul mcguire will bring you the best of the college seniors on espn saturday january the 12th college basketball in the southwest conference it is texas in the white they trail houston by 6 56 50 just under seven minutes to play good shot of the cougar uh, matchup zone the 3-2 zone look at the arm strength span that Gettys gives him on the uh, point of that zone a travel will be called outside just as you saw that graphic the texas longhorns add another turnover they now have 16 for the ball game 11 for houston as blacker turns it over on the travel and goes back defensively against winslow well i think what happened that time sam is they got him a little too far out of his area he tried to go one-on-one -on -one from the wing and he's done all the damage underneath and when the big guy has to put it on the floor uh not good things uh, are possible well good That's things, great good good things, things can about. happen with franklin who misses and gets his own rebound though Reset the 45 second clock for Houston, but he's in a lot of trouble from Brownlee and Willow. Look at the alley loop going to Winslow. Anderson, yeah, but it's out of bounds. It belongs to whom? No, oh, they played it Cooper last touchdown. That brought the hook of horns fans to their feet, didn't it? Duck, huh? <laughs> 6 16 left to play in the second half. The Longhorn mascot can't believe it, nor can Bob <laughs> Willard. Well, Guy Lewis can, and the Cougars have the ball in the six-point spread. Unfortunately, there's been a piece of debris that has been thrown on the floor almost where Frank, or excuse me, Dickens is standing right now, and I think he stepped on it. Referees have not spotted it. Very dangerous. Again, Houston, they're going to try to use as much of that 45-second clock now. There's a good shot of the uh, Winslow coming that pick at the top of the key to permit Franklin to penetrate. Carlton Cooper will reach in, gets only his first foul. And that is only the second team foul call on Texas. But what it does, it resets the 45 second clock, which had run down to about 21. Carlton uh, no, Cooper, it, who again had the flu yeah. this afternoon, was supposed to start, then was out of the lineup, and then is back again. Is very weakened here for Texas, but is on the floor giving his best. Well, again, it's little things that uh, win ball games for you. Uh, sickness can hurt you as much as a bad performance. So uh, the chemistry's got to be right. Everything's got to fall in place should have come into effect. Houston has all four of their timeouts left. Texas has but two. They have used two up here in the half. 
5.34 left to play in a six-point Houston lead. 45 second clock at 24. Well, I said they play uh, two different ways. On the road, they play a little bit more conservative, and at home, uh, they don't hold it that much. They just, uh, like Andrew Carnegie, they fake left, fake right, and go right at you. <laughs> and try to impress you as they do here with Franklin. Excuse me, Dylan. No, it is Franklin. Excuse me. Cooper. Oh, he just throws it wildly away right to Dickens. What a terrible turnover for Texas at a horrible time. Boy, was it ever, because uh, that could have got him within uh, four. Dickens is fouled by George Davis. Davis with his first foul. Third team foul on Texas. Going uh, to the hoop. That time was literally Eric Dickens, as you take a good look at George Davis there. They rule the foul came out on the floor, or is he going to shoot? No, it's out on the floor. Again, on the third team foul on Texas, no shots for Houston. Let's see if they do what I said in the first half. Uh, they're as good as anybody in the country taking it out and scoring. Winslow powering inside. Cooper comes from the outside. The block, but Anderson cleans it up. How about that? We got lucky one time on the call. 58-50. Houston's lead is up to eight again. 4.46 to play. Well, and they're packing it in now. They, they know they're on the ropes. They're going to look for the rebound and the transition. Davis with an air ball. It's out of bounds, and that's unfortunate for the Longhorns as the Cougars, as John pointed out, packed it down. Justin Pinder, that shot on the outside, and it comes a ride. A little surprised that they don't have uh, Carl Woolick at the top. Average is 11 points a game. He's the first guy that Bobby Weldick recruited here in the Longhorn program. He's a seasoned player and uh, seems to be like the most confident of the guards, Sam. I don't know what you would think, but uh, that'd be my choice to shoot that jumper. Bolden is going to come off the bench for the Longhorns here in a moment as Houston works it outside. Again, Texas in their man for man. <laughs> Willick knocks it away. Nobody ready for it, and it's picked up by Dickens. Uh, he throws to Winslow. Winslow can't handle it, and that's a dozen carvers for the Cougars. Now Bolden will check back into the Texas lineup. 33, Carlton Cooper. Bolden did not score in the first half. The 6'4 sophomore from Colleen is Cooper. Again, under the weather, the senior out of Paris, Texas, will sit down. And the key stat. Wow. 17 turnovers for Texas to 12 for Houston. The Longhorns. There's Bolden. Gets a screen from Brownlee. Doesn't take the shot. Bolden's a good shot. There's Davis. Little George from Fort Worth. Pasco will put it down for his first boot. Well, I'll tell you, he missed two at the top of the key, Sam, but he hit that one from Waco because that was way out on the wing. Apparently a personal foul will be called, and it is. It goes on Dixon. Dixon will pick up this fourth personal foul as he shoves off on George Davis to get the ball. Oh, what a nice replay from our producer Steve Stedman and our director Mark Payton here tonight. As you see Eric Dickens go into the... Bench for the Houston Cougars with four as a timeout has been called now by the Houston Cougars. That's their first timeout they have used up here tonight as Guy Lewis, I think, wants to get their attention here with 3.46 to play. I'll tell you all the more reason why that was a good shot out of the guys in the truck was because, as we said, when uh, Texas hits that long shot, they immediately went into their denied defense, Sam. And what they're looking for in there is a, a bounce pass. Uh, to go awry and or a turnover. At that time, Dickens committed the offensive foul. And, uh, there you see Bobby Welton. And look at the respect that club gives him. John, before we get even more hectic here, our thanks going out once again to Jay Goldberg, the sports information director at the University of Houston, their head coach, Guy Lewis, and his staff, and athletic director Tom Ford for their help on our telecast tonight. And from the University of Texas, their sports information director, Bill Little, his assistant, Doug Smith, who's in charge of basketball. The lost Dodd, who is their athletic director, and certainly Bob Welthick and his staff here at the University of Texas. And I'll tell you, we're in the huddle there with uh, Guy Lewis, uh, 62 years old. And as I said, uh, Sam, one, one thing that's amazing in his dossier, he's had 28 players drafted in the NBA. But of those 28, 10 of them have been first-round picks. In the last three years, he's had three people pass up their senior year. Rob Williams. Uh, Clyde Drexler and Akeem Olajuwon. I mean, it would be frightening to think of this club with Olajuwon, how good they would be. And they say that Winslow may very well be the next one to make that decision, but so far, nothing in on that as he plays here for the Cougars as Texas works outside, trailing by six, 58-52. Davis, like that spot, he said, I found my number, folks, and he dials it in again. They just had him point. in the wrong area shooting, Sam. They should have put him out onto that sideline. Not what you'd call a high percentage shot, I might add. Attendance here tonight, just 
slightly under 6,000 in this beautiful 16,000 seat arena. But they have been huh. privileged to quite a show here tonight from the Longhorns and the Cougars. <laughs> Key turnover. Willock on the break. Franklin catching up. They knock it off the rim, but scored for Willock at six and a half on the Longhorns. Two. Well, I tell you, it is a dandy, and uh, boy, I tell you, don't leave us. These 5,900 people sound like 16,000, don't they? Well, the Houston Cougars may believe that, as Guy Lewis looks on as his ball club shoots at the basket right in front of his bench here in the second half. Well, I tell you, Houston needs to take their time, get the good shot, let Franklin penetrate in or go inside, and uh, Texas, on the other hand, needs the rebound if it's off. There's the rebound by Wacker. Good defensive play by Willock. Wacker steps away from Franklin. Willock into the forecourt. Two and a half minutes to play. A two-point Houston lead, 58-56. Well, they made a change, Sam. They, oh, no, they did Here comes Willock at the top of the key. Wacker tries to get the offensive rebound. There's a foul to be called, and they're going to call that on Anderson, and that's his fourth personal foul. I'll tell you, Mike Wacker did a nice job coming in from the corner being active. Anderson uh, tried to do the right thing by boxing him out, stepped in front of him, and consequently, the position was not his, and the official called a foul on him. Not a bad call. 15 foul on Houston. Neither ball club in any real foul trouble right now. Five team fouls on Houston. Three on Texas with 2.12 to play. Again, you're allowed seven per half before the other team is allowed the shot and the penalty. Willock. Texas will try to use up a little of the time here and then try to... Bradley's been a little quiet. He's got 20 points, but we haven't heard from him in a while. I tell you, they need to get it to uh, Carl Willick as far as I'm concerned because he's the he's the one with the experience in the season players. 15 on the 45-second clock. Davis, oh, a rocket. Here it goes. We're tied at 58 all. Like I said, Sam, they need to get it to Davis. <laughs> Guy Lewis. On the sidelines, wondering where in the world did that 10-point lead go at 56-46. Dennis will lose the ball. What a play by Bolden. Forces the turnover. Texas gets the ball back a minute 33 to play. That goes back to the old axiom that Bobby Knight uses an awful lot where Bob Wilton had got it. You can use that pressure probably for about 38 minutes. It may not help you, but all of a sudden in the last minute and a half, the Cougars have turned the ball over twice on an offensive foul, and Reeves Geddes lost it going out of bounds there, and they have a chance to take the lead. Second timeout taken by the Houston Cougars here in the half. Let's watch the steal and the eventual turnover here by Getty. Well, you won't see him do that often because uh, he's quite a ball handler and a seasoned player, but he just lost his footing, touched the ball, it went awry, and the Longhorns, as I say, for the first time in a long while, Sam with a minute 33, uh, if they ever needed to execute, they need it now. At the top of the show, we mentioned Mike Wacker. As you look at the Houston Cougars, Wacker for Texas, he only had six at halftime. He has erupted for a total of nine points in the second half. He's got, of course, 15 for the game, but more importantly, 13 rebounds in this ball game tonight for Texas. Well, and I think one thing in Bobby Weltlich's favor is uh, building the basketball teams like building a house, Sam. The most important thing is the foundation. He suffered for two years here. And let me say this to you. Whether it be on the road or at home, the Longhorns are not going to be a pushover this year. You can book it. Texas has outscored Houston 12-2 as you see the time there. They were up down 56-46. to And again, it's 58-58 all tied up here. As again, they have tied it with a minute 33 to play. Excuse me, I think I said down by two. It is tied at 58. Texas is basketball. And they need to use, use the clock, either get the good 15, 12-foot jumper, and or go inside to the people that got them here, Brownlee and Wacker. Davis, who has had two back-to-back -back baskets, being guarded a little more closely out on the top of that key now. You notice how they changed since uh, Davis came in and hit those three jumpers. It gave him that lift that Weltlick was looking for, the chemistry. Bolin, Davis, Willock, along with Brownlee and Wacker. That is Willock. I've been, you I've been waiting for that one. Willock with the basket, 53 seconds left to play. Yeah, this is where Tannen will take over. Uh, it's 47 and counting. You can uh, look for Franklin to penetrate, Dickens to shoot the jumper, and or inside to Winslow. Texas, keep in mind, only has three team fouls. Should they be able to foul before somebody could get a shot? If indeed they are on a breakaway, so keep that in mind with no foul shot. Here's the shot by Dickens. 
Hold down by Rocker, 26 seconds to play. And I'll tell you, they could put it away if they can handle the ball right now. We've lost our monitor a little, Sam, but uh, there's 17 seconds in count. We're not worried about that as a foul is called on Winslow. Five fouls, Winslow fouls out of the game. Texas will not be shooting foul shots yet, however. They'll have the ball, more importantly, out of bounds with 14 seconds left to play. And at the top, we said it was a critical game for the Texas Longhorns. And uh, the experts rated it an even game coming in here. With 14 seconds left, Texas is up a deuce, and they're going uh, on the line. Is that right? No, they will not shoot foul shots, as again, it's only 16 fouls called on Houston. Okay, now Texas will use up their third timeout. They'll still have one left. But the Longhorns with, once again, Carl Willock. The coach has been calling for it all night long, uh -huh. John Clark. He hit the jumper out of the corner. It's eighth point of the game, but all of them in the second half. And Texas leads by two. 14 ticks of the clock left to play in Southwest Conference play. Texas with the ball. Sam in their press guide, Bobby Welklick, uh calls Carl Willick a player that will do whatever's necessary to build the program. And uh, it's the old story. You go with the people that get you here. The home ball game, I've kind of been waiting for him to break out of it. And what better time could he have exemplified his talent when it was tied at 58 with that key 15 foot jump. Guy Lewis telling his ball club it's not over yet, 60 to 58. As we are again are in a dogfight here in the final 14 seconds. Now Houston has to get the ball back. They cannot afford to foul because that would put Texas at the foul line with one and the penalty. Now, let's look at Texas as far as the people on the floor and foul shooters. Willock is the best at 71. Perriman at 67, Rapper at 65, Davis has yet to shoot a foul shot this year. That might be a man they go after and foul. And another man they have on the foul is Ron Lee is a 64% foul shooter. Sam, they only have two choices. They need to steal the inbounds pass and or foul immediately. And they don't have time to pick out the weak shooter. They need to foul the first person that gets that ball. Here's Wacker with the inbounded pass. Willock, that is not the man they wanted to foul. He's the best of the foul shooters, even though it's only 71. But Willock is certainly turning into quite an opportunity to be the star of this game as he comes up with the jumper and now look over the line with one and the penalty on the 17 foul call on Houston. Well, I'll tell you, uh, a couple of years back, I uh, had the opportunity to sit and one, watch one of the greatest talents in the collegiate game. Chris Mullen walked to the line and missed a one and one in a crucial situation. The one thing that uh, Houston did well, they only let one second elapse off that clock and in the last minute of the game, Sam, trust me, statistics don't mean a thing. <laughs> By the way, let me bring you up to date on Mike Wacker. We pointed out he has those 15 points. He now has 15 rebounds, which is a new career high. He ties it for the second time in his career. What a night. Well, a big foul shot. <laughs> there he makes the front end of the one and one. I'll tell you, they sense it. And, uh, he used all the iron on that one. In the industry, we'd call that a holy ghost. <laughs> He'll have one more. The Pokemon Horn fans cheering. Again, as we pointed out, Willock at 71% is the best, but he misses, but Wacker with another rebound. He's got a new career high of 16, and it may be the most important of his career. Texas find a stall of the way with five seconds of foul, and Willock will go to the line again, and the Longhorns are jubilant here at the special event center in Austin. As fouling out of the ball game will be Eric Dickens with his fifth personal foul and Willock will shoot foul shots. You know, they kind of lulled Houston to sleep early in the second half. Uh, Sam, they overcame a seven-point deficit, all of a sudden got back in the ball game. And uh, if you're ever looking for a basketball game to turn a program around, Bobby Weltlick has done a fine job with this. But by the same token, Guy Lewis been through the mill a number of times. He's going to regroup this Houston Cougar Club, and uh, they're definitely going to be one of the contenders along with SMU and Arkansas in this league. Well, we'd like to thank our statistician tonight, Greg Beeslein, from the University of Texas, who has done just a super job, along with Ivan Melster, who's been working across the court. It's always nice to have gentlemen that know their job and do a super job, and gentlemen, you certainly did tonight. 
61-58. Texas leads by three. Five seconds left to play. Well, I tell you, we kind of alluded to the fact that if Texas could keep it a 60 to a 50 point game, they had an opportunity to win. And uh, with five to go, 61-58 uh, uh, keeps it in that bracket. Willock could certainly just do all the damage in the world in Houston. To keep in mind, in the Southwest Conference, unlike some of the other conferences in the years gone by, there was a three-point shot, no such animal here. Willock misses. Rebound comes off to Texas. That oh. block is stolen by Brownlee. Knocked out of bounds by Houston. It belongs to Texas. One second. This one will be in the camp of Texas. They'll go one and one in Southwest Conference play. Also one and one for Houston. Wacker will inbound it. This one is over. The Longhorns have upset the Houston Cougars tonight. That ball went in. 61 58 <laughs> is the final score as the Longhorns are jubilant for Coach Bob Wilson here in Austin. Well, it has been a night, John Clark. You called it the control of Texas trying to stave off the running of the Houston Cougars, but they worked well on the backboard and the size. Wacker and Brownlee turned the trick here tonight. I'll tell you, uh, execution personified as you look at a happy Bobby Weltling. But uh, they kept it in uh, the good offensive output. The Cougars were averaging 80 points a game, Sam. They only got 58 tonight. And uh, anytime that happens, uh, they're right to be beat. But as I say, uh, Guy Lewis will uh, rally this club. And uh, for the ones of us in the industry, the Southwest Conference is going to be an awful strong time. Well, bringing you up today, Bradley leads the way for the Longhorns with 20 points. Wacker again gets 15 points and a career high 16 rebounds. The top man for the Houston Cougars with 15. Once again with Greg Anderson and Alvin Franklin is held to 14. A Winslow fouled out with only eight.